So I want to talk a minute about Tesla. Um, this is the, the new Model 3, and it's essentially the car that I have. Just, you know, I don't have the refresh. And I could honestly care less about the refresh. I don't like that there's no stalks. Um, not crazy about the signals being on the steering wheel. You know, those small little things that just don't really interest me. Um, I am happier with my Model 3 than I would be getting this one. Um, this is the exact configuration that I have in the older model. I do have the wide interior. That did increase $500 with the refresh, whereas the one that I had was $39,990 when I bought it. This one is $44,90. Um, so I basically could have the same car, the newer model, for pretty much the same price. The only thing is with my car, um, I bought it in inventory, and I don't even know if they have Model 3 inventory at this point, but um, I got it at a pretty heavy discount because it was inventory. And then on top of that, um, I got an even bigger discount, or well, I don't know if you call it a discount, but you know, the price was even lower because of the tax credit. Um, now, I was kind of burned on this because, oh, they still have the old models. That's interesting. I was kind of burned on this because, um, come to find out, <laughs> you can only qualify for the tax credit once, and I tried to qualify for it three times. <laughs> that did not work out. Um, so I ended up only getting the tax credit on my Model 3. I didn't get it on my R1T. I didn't get it on my Model Y. Um, so, you know. I, I definitely took a loss because I had accounted for, you know, oh, well, I get a tax credit at the end of the year, so I'll be willing to take a little bit less when I sell it, and that was my mistake, clearly. But um, I bought mine out of inventory. It looks like they still have one of the older models, and all the new ones are, others are new models. But um, when I bought it out of inventory, it was kind of like this. It was heavily discounted, um, so I ended up getting it for $27,500 out the door, uh, after the tax credit. Now, obviously the tax credit's $7,500, so somewhere along the lines of 35000 or so remaining uh, that, you know, I actually ended up getting financed. At the end of the day, I did get it for twenty seven five. It's just that 7500 of that went to a tax credit. Today, Tesla is offering trade-in on that car, at twenty seven nine, so including the tax credit, I could stand to profit four hundred dollars trading it in today. Um, it does have just under five thousand miles. Um, I've been using my free unlimited supercharging, obviously. So um, you know, getting the use out of it. But um, really, at the end of the day, I think that I have changed my mind about the Model 3. You know, I, I all the issues that I said I had with the first one are kind of being brought back. Um, I am six foot five, and I feel like I'm getting into a tiny little car. <laughs> and that's, that's really what it is. Um, it's not a big deal. Uh, considering what I paid for the car versus, say, going into a Model Y, um, it it's not worth it to me. The price difference in the Model Y is so much more because, you know, I don't want this model. I don't want the rear-wheel drive. Um, for a while there, they were using 4680 cells, which um, tend to have a horrible charging curve that we've learned. Now that it's a rear-wheel drive, I think they may actually be using LFP, but if they are using LFP, that means this car no longer qualifies for the tax credit. Um, let's see, it doesn't actually say here, so I don't know. Um, hard to say. Uh, if I were going to go with a long range, let's do purchase price here just so I can see. Um, if I want to go with a long range, you see that the difference really isn't, um, that big between the two. And then by the time I go and say, well, I want the nicer wheels, um, that alone makes it not really worth it because once you go performance, it comes with nicer wheels. So you're not 
having to pay that difference. So 48, and then you add 49.50 versus 52 for $2,490 or $2,500 more. Um, you know, you're getting the upgraded brake calipers. You're getting the extra performance because this one's 4.8 seconds, whereas the performance is 3.5. So it really doesn't make any sense to not buy a performance when you're looking at the Model Y. And, um, you know, then I start customizing how I would want it and adding all these extra little things. And now we are 56,490. Um, and considering I could have two of my current Model 3s for that price, that makes no sense. Um, sure, there is a tax credit that, you know, I could qualify for. Um, I did technically uh, already qualify for the tax credit on my Rivian, but I would simply choose not to take that one uh, instead taking this one because this one is seventy five hundred and my Rivian was thirty seven fifty. Uh, so obviously I'm going to take the bigger one. That still makes the car forty eight nine ninety um, after the tax credit. So that's still a lot, <laughs> um, almost right there with, you know, having two of what I already have. So that, that doesn't make any sense to do that. Uh, it would be nice to have the bigger car, but when we're talking $56,000, I can think of some other pretty decent cars that I could have for $56,000. Um, I mean, I could wait and get the R2, uh, which I know is not coming out for a few more years, but I can enjoy my Model 3 until then and then move into the R2 it's going to have a NAX port natively on it. So, you know, superchargers, not having to use an adapter, all that's going to work. So, um, yes, I would like to have another Model Y performance, um, but it just doesn't make any sense considering what I got my Model 3 for. Yeah, I could trade the Model 3 in and potentially make a $400 profit right now, but it, there's nothing else here that interests me. You know, the Y is too expensive. The new three, I don't get, I don't care. I don't like the new design, the no stocks. I'm not about it. If I'm going to go no stocks, I'm going to go with this. And um, sure, 68, 590, that's crazy, but that's not the price. I mean, the price is really 79. Then you take the tax credit away. I mean, you know, then you're looking at, you know, you're still over $70,000 for this car. Uh, and then you got to think, well, you know, if I want it the way I want it, now it doesn't qualify for the tax credit, you know? <laughs> so, um, so there's nothing, I mean, I could, you know, obviously I like my wide interior and I would want a six seat. Uh, now it doesn't qualify for the tax credit. So it's not even worth it. Back in the day, you could go, let's see, that's ninety nine ninety. Back in the day, you could take the plaid, and they would waive the six seat cost. Oh, it's it's waived again. So okay, they've gone back to that. So really, nine thousand more dollars, and now you get a plaid. You can go two and a half seconds zero to sixty. Again, this is pricing territory way outside of what I can comfortably afford, and that pretty much rules out the Model S as well because that's outside of my pricing allotment. Uh, now we've got the Cybertruck, but I mean, good luck getting one anytime soon, unless you're a celebrity or have 30,000 referral points. Um, so yeah, th that's, that's Tesla's lineup. That's, that's it. That's what you get to choose from. And, um, I honestly don't think that you could do any better than I've already done. Um, far as pricing goes on my Model 3, and it's a pretty solid car. It does have, you know, if you've ever watched people who've had these Model 3 standard range, they talk about the um, the noise that it makes when going down the interstate. There is a rattle in the front behind the uh, wheel wells, or in the wheel wells. Um, I'd never noticed it, and then when I bought this car, I noticed it, <laughs> and it is very prominent. And I thought I was going to buy some um, mud flaps and try to like install them to put pressure on the wheel wells, uh, but I've never installed them. So um, 
I don't know if that'll fix it or not, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Um, so yeah, anyway, to the point, um, I would like to get into a Model Y. I think it'd be bigger. I think it'd be better. It would be faster. Um, but the price difference is not worth it. It's not 36000 after federal tax credits. I mean, I'm not taking the rear-wheel drive model. Don't want that one. Um, so let's look at the only other option, which is going with inventory. Um, I have been kind of peeking at inventory because um, when, you, when you customize down what I'm looking for, so I want a red one and I want white interior, and I would prefer to have the um, tow hitch. It's not a it's not a must, but it would be nice. Um, these prices have been fluctuating like crazy. Uh, so after tax credit is what we're looking at, because now Tesla lets you apply the tax credit at the time of purchase instead of having to wait till the end of the year. So we're going with tax credit pricing. Um, 43,910 or 44,470 are the two that they have in stock right now. If we take the tow hitch out, we now can get one at 42,440, 43,910. Um, so like I said, these prices have been fluctuating like crazy. And the other day when I checked, um, it was 40,440 after tax credit. Uh, and, and I thought, well, for 40,000 versus, you know, getting the one with a tow hitch at 43, um, I could, I could add the tow hitch aftermarket for cheaper than that. So I would just get the cheap one and add the tow hitch later. Uh, but I, obviously the prices have gone up another $2,000 again. I think this is really based on stock. Um, if they have, them in stock for a while, they start dropping the price. And if they start selling them, then they start raising the price. Um, they've pretty consistently had four available, two with and two without the tow hitch. But um, prices are definitely not the 56 that we were looking at a minute ago for building a brand new one. Um, at 40, after the tax credit, which it's not available now, but it was yesterday, at 40, I would, I would consider it because, um, that's a pretty good chunk. I mean, we're talking, you know, $16,000 off of ordering it brand new, uh, the way that I've configured it. Uh, so yeah, that, that seems, that seems worth it. Um, again, you know, to get out of my model three, I would have to pay the difference on the loan. So I'm not sure that right now is the time to do that. But um, my free supercharging does expire in June. So, and June should be the end of quarter for the next quarter. Uh, so I'm kind of expecting them to run some sales and deals in June. And it may be the move in June to try to, to get one of these if I can get it for around 40 or less. That would be way better. Um, and trade in my current three. Plus, that's going to give me three more months to get the current balance down on the loan so that I'm not so far in the negative when I try to trade it because I'm not going to roll the remainder over into my new car. I'm going to pay the difference so that I'm not upside down. I definitely don't want to be upside down. Um, but that's a thought. That is a definite option at this point uh, to move into something like this, uh, get rid of the three. Um, I would still be daily driving it to work. And, um, you know, if, if I need to go on a Tesla trip, this would be the one that I would take just because I still have a ton of supercharging miles. This one does come with 5,000 miles of free supercharging as of right now. Now, in June, it may not. Uh, but as of right now, if I were to purchase it, I would have somewhere along the lines of 30,000 free supercharger miles. Uh, just because I've gotten a couple of referrals uh, since then, this would also give me 10,000 referral points from buying it under my own link, um, plus the 5,000 they're giving me here. So we'd be looking at a little over 30,000 miles of free supercharging uh, to go with this car if I did do it. Now, obviously, um, if I kept my current car, I'm still going to have like 15,000 free miles to, to blow on it but, um, or so, <laughs> but, uh, this is just, you know, 
kind of comparing, you know, uh, it wouldn't get six months of free supercharging like my current car has. So it would, I would have to use from my miles, but honestly, 30,000 supercharger miles, uh, it would be hard for me to use that in the two year allotment that I'm given. Um, I know there are some tricks that you can do to extend that out and make it a little bit longer. And I'd probably try that, but it would be a challenge to try to use those miles in that time for me anyway. So, uh, I know that for at least the next two years, any supercharging would just be free. So we will revisit this. Um, I'm not ready to do anything now and I'm not ready to make any decisions now. Um, you know, I, I made another video that should have came out before this one that just basically says, you know, my super duty is being built, probably going to trade my Rivian in to do that. Uh, and I'm not trying to make a bunch of transactions at once here. Plus, uh, going with the Tesla route, there will be financing involved just because, you know, I don't have that kind of money just laying around to do that with. Um, but I would like to have it. So, you know, financing would be a thing. Um, they do this, uh, prices will increase, uh, whatever. I, you know, they did that last month. And, um, yeah, the prices did increase by $1,000, but the, uh, the discounts ended up bringing them down further than what they were. Uh, so, you know, not really that big of a deal. So, um, so yeah, we'll revisit this, uh, maybe in June, July. Well, June is the end of quarter. So beginning of June, we will probably look into it more seriously. June 9th is when my free unlimited supercharging is, is up. So, um, at that point, I will probably be ready to get my Model Y. But uh, until then, let's see how many miles I can hit by June. <laughs>